Hi folks! Have you ever wondered how these great software architects educated themselves in the way of software architecture and all the topics related to coding? One of the most important things is to combine somehow theory with a practice. By practice I mean coding, designing different applications from different business domains and by theory I mean different publications, books, articles, attending to conferences, listening to very wise people. And today I would like to present you three books that I personally find as top software architecture books which you can today find in the market. And all these three books helped me to become way better software architect than I used to be. We will start from the first position that I think is one of the greatest educational books which I have ever read. And I am not only talking about the IT, but as well other areas. And this book is Software Architect Elevator. This is the book from Gregor Hope and it's great. It's really describing everything what you can think from the perspective of software architect. It is like Swiss army knife. It describes a wide area of software architecture. And by wide area, I mean that this is a book for anyone who would like to become a software architect or who is already one but willing to improve his skills. You can learn from it who is software architect and who is not. Same about software architecture. What is the definition of it and how you can understand it. You will hear as well about concept, very important one, the most important in this book, about the concept of software architect elevator. And this elevator will help you to go from the top of the building where all the business is set up, starting with executives, going through managing directors, going through middle management, down to developers where you have to code as well. So you will talk here not only with business, but you will talk as well with coders, with testers, with DevOps and anyone who is involved in software development and not only talk, because this is very important that as a software architect, you have to code, you have to support your team, your decisions that you make together with the team and the business has to be then translated to code. And as more as you code, as better it will be for you and for your team. There are the decisions that you made as entire team. So now take the consequences as well as entire team of these decisions. And that's why this concept is very important. Another thing here in this book is about skills. Why soft skills are important and how to improve them. Communication, explaining the stuff, collaboration and many, many more. You will learn about law of small numbers, five whys and other different concepts. As well, you will find why decision making is very important in this role, because you will face a lot of different decisions that you will need to make. Of course, you will be working together with your team, but a lot of things you will need to take care without your team. For example, when talking to the business, sometimes it is really impossible that entire team can talk to managing directors or so, but you will be there. You will be the representative of the voice of entire team. And that's why it's very important that in these meetings, you are able as well to make decisions. If you follow me on my other social media like Twitter or LinkedIn, you would have probably already spotted that I talked about this book multiple times. And the book is called Learning Domain Driven Design. This is the book from Vlad Kononov. It was a great book that I found last year and I read it. And I can already tell you that there is no simpler book in entire world related to domain driven design. If you are a beginner 
or you are already an, an intermediate or expert, you can still read this book because it covers a lot of different interesting topics. And what's very important here, it's covering it from the practical perspective because there is as well a case study where the author shows the decision process of how you can go in the application. This book explains, for example, how to find subdomains in your business domain, how to split it into the bounded context, how to create aggregates, what can be done from the perspective of the solution architecture, what kind of architecture you should apply to different problems. And here the example will be transactional script, active record, domain model, event sourcing. And the author is describing as well with some kind of a process of decision making, how you can make this decision based on several different factors. That's very important that we are not overcomplicating several modules that are, for example, reports reading then in this reports reading, there is no business logic. So why you should apply here a domain model? And this is something that is really helping you. And this kind of maps will help you in your company when you are designing the applications and so on. So from that perspective, I can highly recommend it. One of the best books that I have ever read on the domain driven design topic and for sure the simplest one. So if you are willing to just join the domain driven design world, this is the position which you can start with. The link to the book you will find in the description of this video. The third book that I would like to show you today and the last one, because in my opinion, these are three top software architecture books that you can find in the market is the one about software architecture and its hard parts. And it's written by several authors. You will find a lot of books in the market which are scratching the surface of interesting problem. And this book is exactly the opposite of it. It really goes very deep in the topic of the trade-offs of a software architecture. What's great is that it's described as a story. You have a story of a monolithic application and the team which is working on it. And this team tries to distribute it somehow to make it more granular, create modules, create microservices. And here you will learn what are the integrators or these integrators for your system. And by this integrator, I mean why you should go into the microservices. Maybe you have several modules that are more or less fault tolerant. So it makes sense to just grab them and extract it to a separate module. Maybe you have a module where features are coming like day by day and it's really changing and it's changing way faster than other modules. So this can be as well the other disintegratory which you can take out and then decide on the microservices. You will learn here as well about very important things for software architect like fitness functions, decoupling, modularity drivers and many other topics. You will read about component based decomposition and tactical forking. Very important things when you are working with monolithic application. You will hear as well about the data. So how to approach the database, how to decide on a type of it, how to extract it, maybe first to some kind of schemas, then split it into the database servers. This, this is as well something very important from the perspective of software architect. For sure, after reading this position, you will learn a lot about trade-offs and what's great, it will be all based on the practical example. So this is not a book that you will read once and then you can forget about it. For sure, you will be getting back into it. And I can guarantee you that because I did it a lot of times. So when I have different problems, I sometimes look into it and then it helps me to find a solution for the problems that I have on a daily basis. Of course, these are only the books, but as I mentioned in the beginning, it's very important to combine the practice and the theory, which you can read from the books, 
And this way you can become way better software architect than you are today. If you are lacking of such challenges in your daily work, for sure you can join some kind of open source project or maybe just start your own one where you can play around with things which are mentioned in all of these books. Maybe you don't work with domain driven design on a daily basis, then let's do it in this open source project. Or maybe you want to learn more about microservices and the trade-offs of it, why these distributed systems are that hard to maintain. And this is the way how you can bring yourself to the next level. Let me know if you liked this video and if you would like to hear more about books, which I really like from the IT area. And I have one more question to you. And this is the question about next episodes. I asked in my social media if you would like to hear about machine learning and artificial intelligence topics, but not from the perspective of ChatGPT, because everyone is talking about ChatGPT. It's more about the algorithms which you can use in machine learning for training your own models. And then I would like to describe them as simple as possible, like describe me like I am five years old or something like that. Let me know in the comments if you would like to hear about these topics. Thank you very much for listening to today's episode and hear you on the next Friday.